everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I am here today with kind of an informal what's on my desk type video. I am just working on um, these journals that I've been sort of working on bit by bit. So if you saw my Impressionism journal, you probably saw that I made a cover like this out of sheep's wool locks. So I've made actually four more of them. I'm making another Impressionism theme journal but I do have some um, yarn related shows coming up like knitting um, knitting sort of, sort of knitting centric spinning centric shows so I want to have a few of these to just kind of test the waters with them at these shows and see how the whole thing will work um, so the first one I've added this pink silk inside of and um, this is like a, a seam across here and it's got really nice pinks and green and yellow and it's a nice tall book. Uh, this one is also the same kind of book but this one I've added a pocket to on the inside and it's got some nice leafy kind of um, fabric inside and it's more purple and it's got some nice like gaps where I let the fabric poke through and this one actually has yarn stems on the back because um, I created sort of like a landscape with it with like stemmed purple flowers sort of just wanted to make it like that same watercolor -y theme that I did and then this one, I had a lot of fun with this one. I did like a stitched gridded pattern over it. And the fun thing with this one is it has um, this really sparkly and iridescent fiber in it. Um, it's called Angelina and it's blended in with wool. And so this one is really nice and waffly feeling. It's really, really nice with the purple. And I like this nice shiny sort of bronzy fabric on the inside. So what I've decided um, to use inside of these is a kit by... Um, Kelly's Crafts by Kelly, I think. Hold on, let me double check on Etsy what who she is. Um, Kelly's. I feel bad not like mentioning her name. Yeah, so yeah, it's Kelly's Crafts by Kelly, and it's called um, Vintage Crafty Lady or vintage crafty ladies. So it's really nice images and I've printed three of the, the background papers and one of the two ephemera pages that you get with the kit. So this kit I think is 18 pages and um, two, like they're, yeah, it's 18 pages over four PDFs and then there's another one or two PDFs that you get that are all ephemera. So I'll show it to you. I'm actually just going to be splitting it up between the journals right now. So for each one, I'll, I'll go through what the first like pages look like just to show you. So this one has a lady spinning. This one, um, they're, they look like they're actually winding wool and maybe doing some stitching. This is like a quilting bee. So that's a good center page. Um, this one is like a dress fitting. So this will go with this one. Then this one is stitching and spinning, more spinning. Is this the same? Hold on. <laughs> I think my printer, like, I had to take a pause with it for a moment, um, and I might have just... Okay, no, we don't have that spinning wheel one in this kit. Um, right? No. Just double checking I don't duplicate the same page in the same journal. No, so that does go with this one. So just this. And that spinning wheel lady, I think, is the beginning of the next kit. Or possibly the end of this one. I just feel like I've seen her already. Yeah, I have. Okay, so yeah, she doesn't go with this kit. She goes with this one. And then the stitching. Yep. Okay, yeah, that's just the beginning of the next one. These are all familiar. Okay. And that goes with this one. So these three books are going to have the same um, background page pages in the kit. Okay, so that's the first six pages for all three journals. 
Now here's the second set of I think six as well. So knitting and reading at the same time because she's industrious. Um, this one is cross stitching on um, a frame. This is spooled silk. This is um, hand spindling. Sewing and more sewing. Okay, so that one goes with this one. This is the same. And then this is the same again. Um, purple one. Okay. Okay, and then this is the next six. So this one, they're like, I think, reading like a pattern. This is a spinning wheel with a nice quill and then a dress fitting um this is um what's it called not tatting um <laughs> why do i forget the name spool something it's basically how you create very intricate lace it's um spool lace i can't remember i have a couple of friends who do it <laughs> Um, this is hand spindling with a drop spindle and um, looks like they are, this is a little girl learning to knit. Yeah, so they're really nice pages. I also like the colors and the shading that has been done to really blend the two pages together. And I'm thinking a little bit about what do I want to do with the backgrounds because I didn't print anything on them. Now this is the ephemera. Um, so there's like these ATC type cards. So I'm going to be splitting these up between the journals, all this ephemera. So, um, lots of pictures again of just handcrafting. And then there's some guest checks and little receipts, belly bands, pockets, journal cards, that kind of thing. And then this one is a little more sort of textile things like these uh, bobbins so I'm going to cut those out and probably um, wind some yarn around them and then use them as like a pocket or a tuck spot and then some postcards tags and just different little pieces of ephemera journal cards and circles pockets more pockets and then just some nice kind of big pieces of ephemera for belly bands and stuff so that is the plan so I think what I'll probably do first is choose what papers are going to go in the signatures along with these after I cut them out um, I need a basket for these actually no I don't I'll just put them over here so today is just kind of like a what's on my desk sort of day. Um, oops, there's a little stone in this paper. This is handmade paper. I just refreshed a new piece on my desk and it has a tiny little stone inside of it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get my guillotine and do some cutting. So yeah, kind of just a what's on my desk video today. So craft along with me, make along with me if you're not doing much today. That is my recommendation. I just thought I would like turn on the camera and show you what I'm working on. Because I know sometimes I just, here's a new journal that I made from beginning to end. <laughs> and I do like to work kind of sometimes just by myself in the background and not have to be filming. I've uh, kind of learned that balance is, is pretty precious, so <laughs> I try to do that. Also, a lot of times when I'm working down here, I have a little one or two down here too that are hanging about, or I'm working in another room. But I've just been like trying to spin a lot of yarn for my show this month. This has been sort of on my to-do list. Okay. And I just need 
to turn around for one minute. Okay, so I'm trying to send a big file on my computer right now. And it's after business hours and I'm just hoping it goes through. It keeps not sending and I don't know why. So I'm hoping now that maybe the network isn't as busy that it will just send, but we'll see. Oops, did I miss a little bit up here? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, bobbin lace. That's what it is. It's bobbin lace. So it's when you have a whole bunch of little bitty bobbins and they're all wound with some thread and you have to kind of move them in a particular pattern to create the structure of lace and it's really really hard <laughs> I think it takes a kind of personality I know a couple people who do it um, one is an older gentleman who is also a wood carver he makes like all sorts of fun little things like little gnome houses and stuff like that. He's really very cute and um, does a lot of folksy type work and he does bobbin lace and um, there's also a woman in one of my local spinning and weaving guilds who does it. And recently I saw a video like that was shared by one of those large aggregator like BuzzFeed type sites and they were showing um, this really cute young girl like this young woman probably like I don't know 19 or something and she was doing bobbin lace and she was doing her own version of it and she was just really cool and bright and sunshiny and cheery and it was nice. Speaking of sunshine, I hope the lighting is okay. It might be a little warmer than usual. I think I need to work out a better lighting situation. I need to do more reorganization and revamp my lighting. But today I have my, um, my sun lamp on. Because my studio is in the basement, I don't have a lot of natural light. We only have these little bitty windows and as much as I would like to have my studio upstairs I just can't because all the rooms in my house although we have quite a few of them they're accounted for and that's because my kids rooms and then our room and I have a room that's like an office and my husband's like kind of music room where he keeps all his records and his turntables and DJ equipment and all that because he is a music aficionado and um, then we have a library so that takes up all the rooms <laughs> upstairs and we have another bedroom in the basement that's like an offshoot of my studio it's a part of my studio really and it's our pottery studio <laughs> But it will be very nice when we finally have the bandwidth to get ourselves organized enough to move and have a property that's just designed differently. I want a smaller house with outbuildings and more land so that I can kind of separate things, have a nice indoor outdoor studio that's like separate from the house. And I don't want to rent a separate studio. I thought about it. But I don't want to have to drive anywhere. I don't want to have to like go outside of my house.
went tobogganing in my new snowsuit <laughs> yesterday and I had a lot of fun. I'm telling you, like, if you have children and you want to, like, do all the stuff they want to do, it's a lot more pleasant when you actually equip yourself, like, <laughs> getting a snowsuit. Yep. And it's an awesome snowsuit. It's like this bright pink metallic one. And it's a dinosaur snowsuit. I found it on dollskill.com. It's I know it's like a website that sounds pretty like outrageous, but it's just a kind of a younger person fashion website. And like, it's amazing. <laughs> I think I mentioned it in another video because I'm just so so excited about it. <laughs> but yeah, it was great to just be dry and warm and like it's all one piece so it came off easily at the end of the sledding. I was in a soggy mess like I usually am, you know, because you're already dealing with like all of the the wet soggy clothes of your children and their snowsuits and the boots and the socks and the mittens and the hats and ugh. Winter parenting, it is not for the week of sensibility. <laughs> it requires a bit of grit. <laughs> Especially like carrying a baby under one arm, well, a two-year-old baby, so he's a chunky guy. And, you know, carrying a sled in one hand and um, a baby in the other hand or a toddler. And then always some calamity occurs like the kid gets to the top of the hill and then they drop their sled and it goes all the way down and they're super frustrated and they have to go all the way back down and get it or you just take mercy on them and you do it for them and... <sighs> yep <laughs> but it was a great day yesterday because it was sunny and um, we went at a time when like nobody else was there so we didn't have to compete for like where to go sledding and there's a really big hill where we go and my husband he grew up in the southern United States so he never did a lot of sledding any sledding actually the, the first time he went was the last time that we went and he had never gone down a very big hill so I told him go so I hung out with my son on a little hill and we sort of did our thing and him and my five-year-old daughter they went up the big hill and it is a huge huge hill it's amazing actually it's like you could ski down it and um, it has this big expanse of like clear land at the bottom so there's nowhere to you know get hurt but it was icy very icy yesterday because it hasn't snowed in a little bit and um, there was a bit of rain and then there's been a few days of like cold sunshine so there was a lot of glare ice so we have a bunch of different sleds like I tend to I did order a couple of those plastic saucer sleds I tried the ones that you blow up like the air tube ones and the first time we used it it popped and it was like an expensive one that had good ratings that said like no these ones don't they don't break so easily I even searched the hill that we went down that day to see like what could have broken it but I just thought it's like an air mattress of course it's going to break like you know but it seemed like a cool sled so I went for it so then since then I've gotten a couple of saucer the plastic saucer sleds that are round and then I've also my daughter has had this cute little sled that since she was two and she still loves it it's just a simple plastic sled and it's got a cute little face on the front and it's pink and it has like this little handle that you hold on to and it has been the best sled it doesn't spin it doesn't tip it doesn't break it just does its job so yesterday my husband went down the big hill with my daughter and she was like you know my, my husband was like are you sure about this and she's like let's go so she went and he followed her and they went once and his sled got a little crack in it because he was going he thinks he was going probably 60 miles an hour down the hill like because it was like I said glare ice no one else was there and it's a plastic you know it's like he calls it a garbage can lid <laughs> so 
it was very funny and then the second time they went the sled actually broke in half like the the plastic one right at the bottom when after he got there so i think he hit a block of like a little block of ice and it just broke his, his sled but that's okay it was um it's a simple sled nothing too stressful and I have, I always pick them up at thrift stores when I see them. I just buy extra sleds because I figure someday we will be able to spend time with some other kids and um, we'll have extra sleds. But for now, we're still playing. We, we play with other kids, but with just a bit of distance. We don't do... That everything is back to normal kind of thing all right so that's one trimmed and I'm not gonna fold them yet because I don't know what I'm doing with the backs but that's pretty now that I'm looking at this this is really chunko so yeah am I gonna have too many pages I don't know for a single signature I usually do about like 16 pages and this is 18 no it'll be fine I think it'll be fine yeah because I'm not going to be adding a ton more to it other than just the kit I'm going to add some um I've got some really nice pages of like crochet blueprints and stuff like that so I'm not going to add a ton to it I'm going to make the the pages of the like the back pages so I'm going to make them very writable so I'm either gonna spray or coffee dye or stain or just kind of do something with um little paper applique type things different things we'll see they're not going to be super packed with ephemera but they're going to have some definitely would like to get another episode of Stitcher's Haberdashery videos out this week if I can. Maybe try to work on that over the next day or two. I think I know what I want to film. I haven't been making a ton of like new videos really. Um, Hopefully I'll get a little more time. I've had some really busy weeks. I try to stick with like the standard videos that I make. Um, Tuesday 10. Tuesday 10 is a long video. It takes a little more time consuming. It's a lot of work um, just because it's like creating 10 pieces of ephemera and it can kind of vary because I don't do any pre-planning. That's kind of the point. And then I do my thrift and book hauls when I have them, which lately I have had them a lot. I've just been, I don't know, I've been doing some shopping therapy, I guess. <laughs> and uh, I also do my Margaret Miller, although I do notice, I think most channels that do Margaret Miller collage is like, I, I feel like they don't get as many views. And it makes sense. Um, I, I think I remember Gail Agostinelli saying that like last year that those videos didn't get as many views. I think people don't want to watch the same prompts be collaged by several different people or it's just not um, enough or something. I'm not sure. I do watch a few. I, I enjoy seeing other people's take on the same thing that I'm doing. It's kind of fun. But I don't really pay too much attention to the analytics. I do sort of look at how certain things are working because I want to make sure that, you know, whatever I'm filming for you guys that you actually like to watch. <laughs> I do take you into account. Okay. 
and I've been having fun doing the spring around series with my friends um, making all of the spring ephemera I have one more video that I haven't filmed yet for that I'm thinking about different ideas I'm still trying to think of what kind of thing I want to make thinking about it in my dreams last night. I have a few ideas. Just trying to narrow it down to one final <laughs> contender. And I like the soft shadows and shading in these papers. They're really nice. Children are really funking around up there. I have way too much on my plate right now, journal-wise. Oh my gosh, I think it's because I've been trying to split my time also making yarn and like I have too many journals I want to make. And then I keep getting more ideas. But like I, I get a book that really inspires me. Like the Your Creative Studio kit that I got really inspires me to make garden gnome journals. And I have these three like green gardening books that are like vintage gardening books. And I think I want to make them into garden gnome journals. So I just set them over with the Your Creative Studio kit. And I think that would be a nice kind of seasonal little series and I'm working on like I have so many things in the background things that I haven't even shown you I have like partial videos I have a journal that I made um, I made a journal inspired by Louisa Heinzel's 365 days journal I was thinking of doing that along with her because initially I thought she was going to do it like um, take all the questions that like she's doing this journal where she's answering viewer questions um, and she's doing it like while she's making in her journal and I thought what she was going to do was um, like make prompts from the questions and that you could play along with her and you know do your own kind of videos and do your own thing but I'm not exactly sure if that's what she's doing now because I haven't seen her release any prompts yet and I don't want to like you know clout chase her idea so I just kind of waiting to see um if I'll do that I'm, I'm using the journal I do want to do something with it and I have a slightly different take on it that I already did because when she released her video it wasn't like the beginning of the year I think she started it in January but only released the video in like late February she's doing it with um bull and hood art and it's a fun idea like essentially you have one page for each day of the year or, or each month of the year and then you're just writing like one line for every day of the year it's like for the journaler who has no time to journal and then the other pages are just pages that you can create whatever you want on and I think she's using them to sort of answer questions that she's asked her viewers to ask her um so I don't know I could do something similar to that I, I could say like ask me questions if you want to um, and I will do you know my best to answer them and to maybe do a piece of art about my life in my in my journal and share that with you. sorry for the little stitch there I had to change batteries um, but yeah I could I could do that kind of thing and share it with you if that would interest you just let me know if that's something that would interest you Leave me a comment. <laughs> and I could do it sort of as just an ongoing kind of project because I don't have obviously the same large following. Um, so it could be hard to get enough questions to have a full year's worth of content. It's hard to say. Okay. Sorry, I 
was just checking on that big file that I'm sending. It's still going. This is the chopping video, the chop chop video. <laughs> this is just one of the many uh, parts of making a journal that is a little bit, you know, time consuming. It's all part of it, right? It's actually good for people to see all the various stages of journal making so that you know the effort that goes into making these books. <laughs> Not a journal maker. Okay. And I think I'll just spend some time working away on these and try to get them finished if I can over the next few days because they're not going to be as complex as some of my journals and that I think that they're I can do this like a bit of an assembly line a little bit for these three. But there's still going to be a lot of stages because I have to make the background papers, cut all of the ephemera, and then do my, I don't know what to call it. It's like my own sort of signature type things that I do to these books and to make them my own. And I have to think about all the different techniques I will use for the background papers. I'm sort of thinking about doing maybe like some jelly printing, but just in very, very soft colors. That could be fun. Sorry if I'm right up in your face with these papers. Okay, that's two, two down, one to go. think of what else I have to talk about or if I should just let you go and you can <laughs> do your own thing and not watch me cutting paper for too much longer. Mm -hmm. Okay sorry I'm back. My husband brought me a really lovely big tea latte and I'm spoiled. So all that being said <laughs> We had a really fun, we've been doing these little things to make ourselves like feel good and like feel better and stuff about the world in general. My husband has a really talented friend. Well, he's my friend too. He started as my husband's friend, but he's actually my close friend. We talk a, like, we talk quite often about stuff. Not as often as I'd like these days, but you know, life. So he's a photographer. You can actually find him on Instagram. His handle is broke underscore homie underscore John. B-R-O-K-E underscore H-O-M-I-E underscore J-O-N. So that's his like Instagram handle. And he's like, um, he does a lot of photography and it's amazing. He is uh, a really kind and wonderful person and just has a really, I don't know how to explain him. He's just got a heart that like, when you, when you meet him and you spend some time with him, like you just know that he's like a sweet person and he like immediately feels like family. Like <laughs> there's just some people that I meet that immediately feel like family and he's one of them. And, um, so he's doing a lot of photography with models these days. He does a lot of urban um, landscape type photography. And so he's had a lot of attention from like some large camera companies and stuff. And he was like joking with like they have like a little, my husband's from Baltimore area, Maryland. And um, most of his friends at one time lived there or still do. And so they have like a guy's kind of chat group and um, 
they were they were talking the other day and John was like oh it'd be so great to get like a sponsorship you know like um, eventually for, for my work and I mean that's the truth is like a lot of artists that's how you can kind of you know break out and make your bread and butter but then the hard thing is it's that climb to the top right? like being able to get enough followers on social media to become like an influencer like when you have a thousand followers you're just kind of getting some of the tools like they allow you finally to have access to things like being able to share links in your post being able to have a community tab like different things like that right like it's if you don't make content for social media you probably don't understand like how much like if you've never been exposed just how much slugging all of us do behind the scenes just to try to you know get noticed and like it's it's important to, for building your business and for building your name like your reputation and sometimes even just like for realizing your dream right and for him it's sort of realizing his dream it's like I don't want to talk too privately about you know him and his life or anything um, but like let's just say not all of us are born with a silver spoon I'm one of those people so I, I absolutely know what that means and uh, have never not had to work too hard for what I have so I um my husband had this idea and he always has these ideas he's a real patron of people's hobbies that's something that I have always known about him even before we were married he was always doing these little things to kind of like one of his friends would have a film project and he was into making indie film he was in a band and he had a lot of creative interests like he still does but they've changed a little bit with parenting and all that so um He's like, you know, we should sponsor him <laughs> instead of the camera companies. Until that happens, we'll sponsor him. So we all got together and we just pooled to buy him, like, he shoots black and white, like, um, DSL, no, not DSL, sorry, SLR, like old, you know, SLR camera, not digital. He shoots black and white. And so we got him enough film for like a year of shooting and yeah, it'll be nice. So I'm really stoked to see his, his upcoming work. He's been taking just really cool photographs of people like different models that he works with and like different kinds of people and they're very, um, there's a lot of kind of emotion and like feelings on the sleeve type feel to his work which I really love I think art should make you emotional if possible you know if I think that's a nice thing to elicit all different emotions out of people we are almost there guys almost there okay. This is my chop and chat video. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'll call it today instead of what's on my desk. Uh, I don't know. I was just trying to think about what to film today. And I kind of wanted to do my old style, like weekly wrap up video that I was doing, <sighs> but it would be like just a gigantic cluster of different things it was like it would be a bit of stitching I'm working on a bit of stitching I, I'm going to keep that for my Roxy's um, journal of stitchery update video because I'm always trying to figure out how to not just make a video that says here's what I made <laughs> and then I'm done for two seconds but I mean I don't know how to handle stitching videos like I know that there's a big floss tube community is primarily cross stitchers and embroiderers maybe but I think mainly cross stitchers and um you know they they have a whole process like first of all they're they're on camera like they have a face cam and then you know they're always sitting in like some cute little room that they stitch in and um they talk about like their whip parade like their work in progress parade and they talk about their fo's their finished objects and then their ffo's which are fully finished objects that they like you know have mounted on in a frame or on a pillow or something and um they talk about their their new purchases kind of like we do our thrift haul videos 
And I've thought about doing some of that, but it just, I don't know, it doesn't feel like easy for me because it's not my only uh, pursuit in life right now to just do one type of hobby. I mean, it's, maybe it's not for them either, but I, uh, I think they're, they do spend a good amount of time to get as much stitching as they get done. I have to be careful watching those videos. They're very enabling. I end up buying like all these patterns or like fabrics, especially that I'm like never going to get through. And I'm doing my best not to be like a book and fabric hoarder. <laughs> But I do have some nice rules around this that I think are going to work, and they have been working. And it's like just mixing up what I do, like, no, you're not allowed to print digitals for this journal, you have to use up some of the vintage books that you bought, or no, you're not allowed to make a fabric cover, you need to use one of the vintage books that you bought. <laughs> so that's how I just finished my dream, my dreamers, the journal of um, dreamers and storytellers is I bought that beautiful book and I, you know, had seen that I, I got it restored. I did all my restoration work and then I was like, I need to use this and get this on its mission to its new owner, to its new life. And that's where it is now. So. But yeah, I kind of think it all depends on like when you're building a YouTube channel I think that there you have to sort of understand a little bit the personality of your viewers if they're the kind of viewers that will watch like you do whatever kind of like um you know I find it funny because I enjoy a lot of different kinds of videos like I enjoy Gail Agostinelli's videos where she just will work on like kind of whatever she's working on but she does do a lot of like you know this week we're working on a farm journal and like for a week or two she'll kind of move through the, the steps on that I like that I also like the 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 work that Catherine at Sunnyside Journals does where it may be a very simple thing but it's 30 minutes of her day and you watch it and that's what it is and I like that approach because I feel like it's not making videos to just please an audience, but it's like also making them for yourself. Of course, everyone wants to make their viewers happy. You guys are the glue, like you're the reason we do this. We enjoy you being there and we enjoy the presence and the community and the chatting and the comments and that relationship is really nice. So um, yeah, it's nice to have like a, an idea though of like who's watching, right? So that you, you know how to both enjoy what you're doing and also enjoy that your viewers are watching and, and staying you know clicked into your video so okay well we cut all of these down I'm going to keep working on these but I am gonna let you go because I'm sure you need to like I don't know take a nap that's what I think don't do anything like that just take a nap read a book do something cozy it is a cozy kind of day here so we will talk again very soon and I'm going to work on these flufferoos and Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Sorry if you didn't enjoy the chop and chat. I know it was a lot of paper cutting and not a lot of like, you know, outside the box creation, but I did manage to talk and not just sit here like a quiet little uh, wallflower. So <laughs> thanks guys. Have a beautiful day and we will talk again soon. Bye for now.